Hi, I'm Dr. Barta Perez, OBGYN, and welcome back to my channel. We discuss everything about pregnancy, birth, postpartum, so you can have the healthiest and most empowered time. Today's episode is going to be about something I get questions about all of the time, which is when can I conceive and start my next pregnancy after I have a miscarriage? I'm really excited to do this episode. It's a question I get a lot, and it's a question that... I hear a lot of different responses too. So I hope that I can answer some questions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You don't wanna miss any episodes, which drop every Friday. All right, before we discuss the outright recommendation, I wanna go over some background real quick. So what is colloquially called a miscarriage is scientifically or medically called either a spontaneous abortion, a missed abortion, which is where you don't realize that your pregnancy has stopped growing or that it isn't viable anymore, but it has an incomplete abortion, which means you're having some bleeding and cramping and expelling some products of the pregnancy, but not all of it. A threatened abortion is a little bit different. That means that although you're bleeding and cramping, there is still evidence that your pregnancy is viable and that is not yet a miscarriage and it may not go on to be a miscarriage we just don't know it's a diagnosis of saying perhaps this will be a miscarriage perhaps it won't and we don't use that definition very often so what i'm talking about is someone who is confirmed to have a miscarriage and also i'm referring to the first trimester overwhelmingly the majority of miscarriages happen in the first trimester and their treatment is a little bit more straightforward typically and has less complications i'm not talking about loss for the second trimester if that's when you've experienced a pregnancy loss, please talk to your individual, either OBGYN or midwife, about what they recommend for conceiving afterwards. I'm talking about first trimester. I'm also talking about individuals who have a known completion of their miscarriage. One of the things to think about is, did I completely pass the pregnancy? This is for sure, overwhelmingly most of the time when you have a procedure to manage the miscarriage called a DNC. And typically if you choose expectant management, meaning waiting for your body to complete the process on its own, or maybe the process started and completed on its own at the time that the miscarriage happened, or if you use medication, which assists your body in completing the process, usually there's a way a doctor will monitor to make sure that your body has completely managed the pregnancy and there's nothing called retained products of conception. So I'm talking about the period when you know your miscarriage has completed, okay, not in the process of it. The other thing I'm talking about is you have had a, what we think to be a pretty standard miscarriage. So there are a few disorders that the recommendation may be different. For example, if your pregnancy loss was because of an ectopic pregnancy, the recommendations may be different. If your pregnancy loss was due to something called a molar pregnancy or partial molar pregnancy, the recommendations will be different. Please always check with your doctor. I give guidelines here and talk about data, but I don't know every individual person's scenario, so this isn't personal medical advice. Okay, if you don't wanna watch any more of the video after this, then my simple answer to the question of when can I get pregnant again after I have a miscarriage, my simplest answer is just you can try again whenever you feel emotionally ready. There is no definitive recommendation of waiting a certain amount of time before conception to increase the health of the next pregnancy. If that's all you're here for, you can leave. But if you want my explanation about that, there is more nuanced information I'd like for you to know. The first nuance is that, you know, I see it commonly recommended that someone abstain from having vaginal intercourse, something called pelvic rest, for about one to two weeks after they have a miscarriage. There's no great data on this. It's recommended by some because there is a theoretical risk that when your cervix softens and opens to expel a pregnancy during a miscarriage, it can allow the normal bacteria that live in the vagina or that may be transmitted during intercourse up into the upper reproductive tract like the uterus and cause an infection. Now, again, there's not really great data on this. My recommendation is usually five days to a week. I think the cervix is probably returned to its normal state by that time, but you may see that recommendation for one to two weeks of pelvic rest, which means no penetrative intercourse. However, that doesn't really affect time to conception because typically it'll take about two weeks for your body to return to a non-pregnant state and then stimulate and ovulate again in outside of that period anyway. So it doesn't impact conception necessarily. Okay. So why did I give the recommendation that there's no definitive time to wait? Well, one, that's what ACOG says. Okay, so this is a practice bulletin on early pregnancy loss that doctors can read. And as you can say, they don't really have a recommendation for an amount of time. And that's because the data is really poor. I really wish that I could say this is the recommendation because 
we know that this X amount of time or no amount of time is safer than another, but actually we base our recommendation mostly on a lack of knowledge, which kind of stinks. Like we should have better research on this because it's a really common question that people have. Miscarriage is super common. It's one out of four. So we really should have better data on this. Maybe I'll get to work. As you guys know, I love research and I love reading studies. So let's dive into this recommendation. This recommendation is based on only two studies. One of them is a study from 1988. In fact, I couldn't even read the whole article because we weren't publishing articles online during that time, and I didn't have access to the hard copy. This was a study that was done in Scandinavia. It was a retrospective study, meaning they were just looking at charts. They weren't following people out, and it included 187 women. That's really small for a scientific medical study. In the study, 56% um, of the participants had conceived within three months of their miscarriage, and 131 women conceived at a longer interval than that, which isn't defined in the abstract. And again, I don't have access to the full article. And in that, what they looked at was the rate of having another miscarriage. And they found that the rate of another miscarriage was the same. Again, this is a super small study. This data is like not very high quality, but it's one of the two data points we have. What's the other data point? Well, the good news is that this study was more recent. This study was done in 2002 in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, but the bad news is it's also not very robust. Okay, so they looked retrospectively. They looked through uh, thousands of charts and were looking for individuals who had a completed pregnancy and birth and had records for the pregnancy and the birth. And then they were looking at individuals who had a miscarriage before that incident pregnancy. So of the charts they looked at, 268 patients kind of had that experience, but only 68 met their inclusion criteria. So this is an even smaller study. Of the 68 patients that were included, 19 of the patients had conceived within zero or one period of their miscarriage, meaning they either conceived right away and didn't have a period, or they had one period and then conceived. So they followed those pregnancies and birth. The other group was 42 patients, and those have had at least two periods before their conception and their pregnancy. And so if you compared the neonatal outcomes between these groups, the pregnancy outcomes were the same, meaning there was an increased risk of pregnancy loss or preterm birth. And when you looked at the individual neonatal outcomes for the babies, they weren't different between the groups. But if you added up the chance that a baby would have any one of many neonatal outcomes, they said it was more likely to happen in the people who waited two or more cycles. Now, this is a really small study. The one group only had 19 patients and the other had 42. So the chances of seeing these rare neonatal outcomes, more rare thankfully, are just less, way less likely to happen in a group of 19 patients. So even though it showed that there's a possible increased risk in neonatal complications of waiting two or more cycles, I wouldn't base any clinical judgment alone on this. I would also say, well, it didn't prove that there's anything wrong with conceiving early, but I don't think it's higher risk to wait longer after a miscarriage. I wouldn't advise patients with that because this, the quality of this data is low. I really wish we had big studies on this. I wish we enrolled people at the time they were having a miscarriage who wanted to conceive again and were open to it and then followed them. Some of those individuals will conceive right away. Some of them will choose to wait for whatever reason that they feel it's important to wait. And then let's follow their pregnancies and then let's see what happens. A big complicating factor here is gonna be age because as age goes up into the higher reproductive years, the late 30s and 40s, miscarriage becomes a lot more common because the most common cause of miscarriage is chromosomal anomalies. If you want more of an explanation on that, I have multiple videos on my genetic screening that talk about that and why. So we need like a big robust data. Hey, maybe I'll do it in fellowship in my high risk OB fellowship. This seems like honestly a pretty easy project to do with our modern uh, medical record keeping system. So any other OBs, medical students, midwives out there, I think this is low hanging fruit for a really great study that could get really highly published and cited a lot and truly help families decide about when to conceive after miscarriage. I also have heard a lot that some physicians will recommend waiting till the first period because of the concern that maybe like the endometrial lining of the uterus may not be like in sync or organized or um, optimal for conception if it isn't within the same cycle as the miscarriage. And I do think that this makes like biologic sense if that's, if that's something someone wants to do. I don't think it's necessary. Again, 
you know, our limited data and include people after one period and after zero period. So I don't know that it's necessary and I wouldn't caution someone against it or make someone feel badly if they conceived before a period. But I also don't think it's harmful or necessarily bad advice. I think it's just neutral advice and within the realm of what reasonable physicians um, could recommend to their patients. So I think that's fine. I definitely though kind of disapprove of anyone telling a patient they should wait three months, six months from a miscarriage. Again, as long as it fits the criteria that I described in the first place, those recommendations may be true for different situations of pregnancy loss like I discussed in the beginning. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I join you in feeling frustrated that we don't have good data on this. Um, I was actually always taught, you know, no one has to wait a certain amount of time just until they really feel emotionally ready, have coped with their pregnancy loss and ready to try again. And when I actually dug into the data, I was actually really surprised to find that that recommendation was based on like low quality, very few data and that better robust data didn't exist. But that's where we are in reproductive health. Again, maybe this is an idea of what I can study, um, even though I have a lot of ideas of what to study, so we'll see. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. I have new episodes out every Friday and I love educating you guys and empowering you. So take care and have a great weekend.